Hello, my name is Sam Huff with Patty Engineering, and I'm here to talk about a project that we've uh, done. We're getting towards the end, but we're still working with our client on this. And uh, what we've done is use MindSphere to collect data uh, from our customer's plant floor, create a digital twin, and then do analytics on that digital twin uh, to uh, suggest and create improvements into their uh, production floor. Just a little bit of background on Patty Engineering. Uh, Patty Engineering was started in 1991, so we'll be celebrating 30 years next year. Uh, Patty is a popular uh, female name in the United States, and it's also the name of our CFO and my wife. Um, so she likes to remind me that she is the boss because she has all the money since she's the CFO, and um, she is definitely the boss, even though she lets me pretend to be the boss as the president. Uh, Patty Engineering is closely aligned with the CSIA uh, organization. We are CSIA certified, which means that the organization has gone into our facility, reviewed all our business practices, and confirmed that we um, uh, do our practices to the best practices and benchmarks document that they've put out. CSIA is an organization of 400 companies mostly integrators, some partners, including Siemens. Uh, we thank them for that. Um, and uh, they, CSI uh, has organizations from uh, every, or all over the world. Um, we are a leader in Industry 4.0 applications. Um, we are um, one of the very few Siemens partners that does DISW, does uh, MindSphere, and also does uh, factory automation. We have been a Siemens solution partner since 2009. Um, as far as Siemens goes, we're a solution partner for advanced factory automation, drives in motion, industrial identification, and locating, including uh, RTLS, um, industrial strength networks, machine tool, we do a lot of work with 840Ds, uh, DISW, uh, the software platform, especially Technomatics, and then MindSphere. Um, this, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the Siemens motorcycle there, but um, I know it was built by Orange County Choppers probably about 10 years ago. When I talk to people at Siemens, they're not really sure where the bike is anymore. Um, I kind of wish it was in my garage, but it certainly is not in my garage. Uh, Patty Engineering, uh, we we work mainly out of uh, flyover country, as we term it in the United States, which is the center of the United States. Um, so our locations, our headquarters, and uh, we're, we're in, where I work out of is Auburn Hills, Michigan. Uh, we've been in this building for about 20 years now. Um, Auburn Hills is just a little bit north of Detroit. Um, certainly a lot of automotive here, and this was an automotive application, although we get into other industries as well. Uh, we have an office in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we had a client that uh, encouraged us to open an office in Indy, and um, it's about five hours southwest of our Auburn Hills uh, office. So we've been in Indianapolis since 2015, had brick, have had brick and mortar there since 2018. Austin, Texas, we've actually been there since 2010. We've had brick and mortar in Austin, Texas since um, 2014. We did recently move to this industrial complex, which gives us more space for testing and setting up equipment. Um, we did not have any testing space uh, before this. So we're quite excited about our new a place we've been in uh, been in the office for I think about three months now. Um, so let's talk about the individual project itself. Um, the customer is a large automaker, um, and um, this has to do with um, the machining of transmission parts, which are cast aluminum. Um, and uh, how this line is laid out is they have uh, five parallel CNC machines that are being um, fed by two different robots. Um, because of the way the CNCs are, are set up, they're doing two different operations. One is the OP30 operation, and one is a downstream OP40 operation. Um, 
the five CNCs and uh, two robots are FANUC CNCs and FANUC robots. So that there are not, there's not um, Siemens equipment here. Um, uh, the client and us uh, did this on purpose because the client wanted to uh, show that Siemens MindSphere could communicate to different uh, control devices. So here's what the physical system looks like. Um, what I want you to picture is a conveyor line uh, going from the uh, top left of the slide where the uh, PADI engineering logo is to the uh, bottom left of the slide. Um, and uh, that are the those are the parts, the transmissions that are being conveyed down the system. When they get to this OP30 system, this uh, robot one, uh, which is a seven axis robot. The seventh axis is the slide axis. Uh, goes over and picks up the machine part or the parts to be machined in OP30. And then um, uh, it will unload a finished part out of a CNC at the same time loading a machine to be uh, machined in OP30. Now, what happened is down the line in OP40 was a much slower process and they had five CNCs uh, running OP40, but it still could not keep up to production. And they didn't have um, the physical space to add a sixth CNC in the uh, OP40 uh, uh, machining line. So they added it to the backside of OP30 and put a six axis robot, Robot 2, which takes parts directly from OP30 to op 40 and um, we'll uh, machine the parts there. Um, so um, the second robot serves um, the one CNC that's performing a downstream uh, operation. So this is a video of the system and I'll go ahead and play it here and kind of uh, narrate what's happening uh, while this is running. line runs.
So um, the customer has struggled with this system. Um, uh, one of the things that has happened in this system, I think it's about a half a dozen years old, and I, I think probably about three years ago they added the uh, the OP40 uh, number six. Um, and since then they, they have not gotten the um, increased efficiency that they thought they would get out of it. And um, it, it, it's, it's been a struggle for them. Uh, it's been kind of a mystery. They've, they've, they've ran some simulations, done some uh, um, industrial engineering work around this, but never really taken the simulations and, and tied them to the uh, actual data getting out of the, that they're getting out of the line. So one of the things I like to talk in general about is, is closing the loop. And I really like this uh, graphic here. Um, you can see the physical system in the top left corner. Uh, that is the, uh, uh, you know, what, what your system's running like, right? And then we can bring the data up out of the physical system into MindSphere and create the digital twin. And here we created the digital twin using a plant sim from uh, the Siemens Technomatics uh, product line. Um, but, you know, the one thing is, is, is when you first create the digital twin, um, you're gonna have, uh, you, you have to perfect it to the physical system. And th that's a lot of trial and error, taking things back and forth and making sure that when you run the simulation, it runs exactly like the physical system. And depending on how complex your system is, and we've got a lot of moving parts on this system, that can take a little bit of time. Um, and then the other thing you can do with the digital twin is perform analytics on it and see how you can improve the physical system in, instead of um, trial and error, which has been done for the last 30 or 40 years. You can, you can really use analytics on it to see how to improve uh, efficiency. So let's talk about how we did this. Um, so um, uh, for the cell, uh, which the cell includes the five CNCs and the two robots, uh, we create we used a Siemens IPC, and, and we used um, device wires from Telet on that to communicate to the the CNCs and the robots. Um, we're actually processing um, a lot of the data on the edge and then feeding it up to uh, MindSphere. Um, the um, you know. Uh, we are on MindSphere. We have some uh, screens that can show you timings and spindle positions and torques and OEE and basic OEE data. Now, I think a lot of the issue around MindSphere that happens is people look at MindSphere and say, okay, well, I wanna have SCADA in the sky. Well, MindSphere is more than SCADA in the sky. Really, the, the power of MindSphere is to get the data and to analyze the data. Um, you know, we, we brought out a, a large series of time series data um, and um, different intervals bring different intervals, uh, data at different intervals, just depending on how important it was. Um, and one of the things about the data that we liked in MindSphere is we could export the data. So we can export it into a CSV file or JSON and then do additional analysis in our uh, uh, AI and business learning tools. Um, we've actually uh, trained a lot of our team on um, uh, data analytics and data science and that kind of stuff. And it's, it's really uh, uh, coming uh, uh, or coming skill set that's going to be needed more and more in production as we're trying to do more with less. Um, as far as receiving the CNC data, we were collecting spindle data, cycle time data, process time data, machine status data, alarms with timestamps, and tool, tool change durations. Um, we um, uh, one one of the things too is uh, you really need to when you're looking at your data set up some type of edge strategy. How are you going to process data on the edge? How are you going to send it up to MindSphere? And then and then you have to look at data that we're going to talk about a little bit later here. That there there were some things we found we didn't need, but there were other things that we needed, and we had to go back and um, get that data out of the system. Um, 
the the robot uh we were getting a lot of information out of the robot as far as what type of pass it was running what machine it was loading what how it's called this kind of stuff and um and one one of the things that we had to do in in the plant really didn't um have this data but but we created it it was to to serialize uh everything and, and make sure we have the serial numbers from the cnc and the robots so we can tie everything back together so big thing is is digital twin creating the model now we were able to create the model using some of the built-in features like fencing stairs part racks and that kind of stuff we also had to create some stuff that weren't uh, necessarily uh, modeled but you know once you do it now we can we have this this library built so that as we do op 40 op 50 down the road and all the the, the model has been built um, so, so, you know, it, it takes a little while to create the model, but it's, it's going to be worth it in the end. And then the other thing too, about these whole models is a lot of times when your line builder is, is building these lines for you, they do simulation to create the lines. Well, then they throw it away and they never do anything with it since then. Uh, we've actually worked with a lot of our clients about, uh, having them, Get the get the models uh, into their facilities and do virtual commissioning and everything else you can do with those models and then keep those models up to date. Um, so um, part of the uh, thing is refining the model. Once um, the the once you get the the model to look like the real line physically, now you got to get it to replicate the line logically, and that includes bringing in the robot pass, the station priorities. Um, and, and we actually, you know, went back and compared a lot of our model to the videos of the system because we wanted it to behave physically like the system. And refining the data, you know, as you're getting data in, you know, we, we, we found some data that we didn't need and some data that we uh, uh, had to go back and collect and, and make sure we were processing on the edge and sending up to MindSphere um just closing the loop keeping up making sure that the simulation was able to keep up with the physical system and we we actually ran the 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 simulation over a period of week weeks comparing the data to the physical system and you know we got a, a difference within uh, the low uh teens as far as difference in uh throughput so at that point we feel like our model's pretty good so um uh again collecting the data reviewing the data and then creating the working model of the data making sure that everything um is is reflecting reality and then you start and this video is going to show you actually i'll pause this video for a second so what this video is going to show you is the bottom is the physical world the top is um uh something that we've gone back to the customer with and are presently implementing and what we've done is simply taken the robot on the rail and as you saw in the video when it's waiting to feed a system it's sitting over by the the uh, conveyor line well what we've done is is we've changed it so that it's perching between two and three and actually the imp improvement uh is going to be in uh hundreds of jobs per week so we'll watch this video a little bit and it's kind of a little bit hard to tell the difference between the bottom and the top but um uh over time uh it will and um you know if this video only runs for about a minute but um you know over time if you improve you know one tenth of a part per minute over hours and all that uh, helps to uh, really speed things up and get more efficiency in the system. So this is kind of a real world example of what we were able to do through simulation to uh, give the customer a fairly easy suggestion on what they could do to get more throughput through the system.
So as you do that and, and you bring it back, now you need to keep your digital twin up to date. You need to, any physical changes in the system, like it's a new part, there's a new path that you have to run in the CNC, whatever, you need to keep your uh, digital twin current and keep running the, the data on it and keep running uh, analytics and simulation on it to see what kind of efficiencies you can improve. So, and one thing that, that you need to do is make sure everything is taken through the cost benefit analysis. Um, you know, it, it might be a million dollar change that we can make to the system. They'll make it run, run a lot faster, but maybe it's too fast for the rest of the systems around it. Um, you know, it, as you can see, the fairly uh, uh, simple uh, system, probably about a hundred hour uh, change by the time you're done with everything at tops to have the robot perch at a different position uh, is able to get the uh, customer a lot more throughput through their system. So conclu conclusions, you're looking to do this with uh, some systems in your plant or your facility. First of all, um, uh, you have to determine your data strategy. What what data do you need? How are you going to get it? What are you going to process on the edge? What are you going to process in the cloud? Um, MindSphere, do not go in thinking MindSphere is skate in the sky. You're going to be disappointed. Um, the real key are the analytics and the data with MindSphere and what you can do with it. And um, you know, you always want to be closing the loop to be analyzing your production data and perfecting your digital twin. With that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, really appreciate being able to talk about this project. And um, thank you for your time today and uh, everybody have a safe and successful 2021. Thank you.